today we're going to build a toilet. So if you're new here, I'm Devin and I've been redoing my 1988 Ford Bravo Class C RV for about a year and a half now. Uh, tons of water damage, all taken care of, and now I'm getting into the finishing touches. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I encourage you to go check them out. Pretty much start to finish, um, it's, it's all there. The good, the bad, the ugly, the blood, sweat, and tears. So anyway, today, for the third time, I'm going to try to build a composting toilet. Um, I purchased a urine diverter, which I bought this off of Etsy, a very helpful gentleman who makes these on his 3D printer at home. First, I wanted to do like a box, you know, around my toilet and I, I, could, I could foresee some problems happening with that. So with the, the box method, it just took up too much space. Um, if I were to do it that way, I would have to like walk sideways to get through the doorway and have like no room for my knees. It just wasn't ideal. I scrapped that idea and it sucks because I was already building it. So I, I wasted some time and I wasted some materials. And then I went to YouTube and I came across a video that started off very helpful. Um, and then towards the end, it was just like, a slideshow of pictures. It's kind of the same shape as a toilet. You know, it's it's rounded. It's not a box. So that would open up a lot more floor space in the bathroom. So in the video, he laid the toilet seat onto the wood, traced around it, cut it out. He did it three times. And then one of those pieces, he traced around the, the inside of the toilet, you know, the hole in the toilet seat and cut that out and then did that again making it even bigger so that the bucket could slide through i did all of those steps i used that entire two by four sheet of plywood and just a few minutes ago before my meltdown i had you know stacked everything up and realized that okay well i don't know if it's the seat that i have or what but it's not big enough so this here is what I was referring to. It's just not enough space. It would be on the bottom because the bucket is tapered, but yeah, it's just not, not gonna work. I just, I scrapped the whole thing and I had a meltdown and I went back to YouTube, watched more videos, still wasn't really finding what I wanted to find. Um, so what I'm gonna do is probably the same method, the same style of building it as what I just tried, but this time I'm gonna lay out all the pieces first and find out how much bigger them the plywood pieces have to be to house everything inside. So this is my diverter that I purchased off of Etsy. And it's kind of nice because it slides right down over the bucket. So it's actually a little bit of a space saver because it's not protruding from the bucket this way. Um, yeah, it just slips down over. You cut a nice little U shape out, which the seller did provide a template for that. And it just goes right down on. Super nice. And it's very, it's very sturdy. So I think I'm gonna take this the original cutout and add two inches to the edge the whole way around, cut it out of cardboard and just see. Just see if that will work. Yeah, there's 
definitely some wiggle room here. So I think this will work. So yeah, that's not too bad. I'm not really sure the best way to do this. So I'm going to glue these in the right place, just on this bottom piece and let that set up. And then I can work with it a little bit, trying to get the top plywood and the bottom plywood lined up around the outside edge. So I think, I think that'll work. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm gonna hold it all together, keeping the top and bottom lined up. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I just put the bucket inside and laid the lid on top just to make sure everything was going to fit and it does and I'm happy with that. Um, I did have to take the handle off the bucket which I pretty much knew I was going to have to do that anyway. And now I'm ready to move on and I think what I'm going to do next is actually paint the top piece of plywood. Since it will be exposed, I'm gonna paint it white, probably two coats, and go over it with a polyurethane, something just to keep it nice and sealed. And then I'm gonna let that dry and come back later to attach the seat and to enclose the base. Okay, so the next step here is going to be putting some little feet on here to elevate it above where the sewer line um, sticks up out of the floor. So I just flipped it upside down, got some scrap 2 by 2s and I'm going to glue, drill, and screw these to the base. Okay, I'm scrapping this idea. So I'm just gonna do the whole strips of glue on and it's gonna look so much better. And it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna stand the test of time. So that's the plan. Okay guys, so sorry I didn't really film any of what I just did, um, but as you can see, I scrapped the vinyl idea and I'm very glad that I did that because I think this looks much better. Um, all I did was take some of the leftover quarter inch plywood that I had from doing the shiplap and ripped it down into one inch strips except for these two end pieces right here. They're more like three inch. And the only reason I did that is because this is completely straight here. It's not curved. The rest of it is curved. So I wanted the one inch pieces so that, you know, it would lay nice um, around the curve. And I used a tube of liquid nails and just glued them on. Um, once it was glued on, I sanded, especially the top edge here, I sanded it real nice and rounded it over a little bit and put the same stain 
that I have on the shiplap in the overcab area and polyurethaned it. And that is it. Um, the bottom edge is not perfect. Uh, it's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Once it's in there, if it bothers me, I can just trim the bottom somehow with, I don't know. I mean, even just using like rope or something like that would, would suffice. So that is where we are now. And I mean, it's basically finished. Just have to put the lid on the top, put the bucket inside and it will be good to go. Okay guys, after much debate and consideration, I think I figured out how I want to run the liquids and I'm gonna go over all of it in case you are trying to build one yourself, some things that you should probably consider before putting in all of this work. <laughs> so obviously bucket sits up front and what I thought was I would have a hose come off the diverter, which is in the front of the bucket, and have the hose run around the side to the back where I would have a container tucked, you know, in that space back there. <clears throat> this is the first container I bought. It is one gallon, but it's slim and kind of tall. So I quickly realized that it is too tall. It stands higher than the bottom of my diverter. So therefore the liquids would have to run uphill to get inside here. So that's obviously not going to work. So then I went on the hunt for shorter bottles that were still a large enough capacity that I wouldn't have to empty it several times a day and let me tell you that wasn't easy this is only nine inches from the floor from the ground so my bottle had to be less than nine inches tall and also had to be able to fit inside here so i kind of thought okay well whatever it just won't sit inside i'll put it out the back that's fine. If I would have made my box, my box uh, bigger, then I could have obviously had a bigger container to sit in the back or in the front. So what I've settled on is this. With the cap off of it, it's only like six, seven inches tall. Um, and it's also quite skinny and still wide, still big enough to hold a decent amount of liquid. I think it's what, 40, yeah, 40 ounces. And it also fits perfectly in the front because I was also having issues with how I was gonna get the hose from the bottom of the diverter around to the back without having to like, just deal with a mess every time I have to have to take it out. Um, I, I went over some scenarios, getting elbows for the hose to direct it back that way. Cause also the hose, I mean, this is, this is what you're dealing with. It's a half an inch inside diameter. So it's still a pretty hefty sized hose. It's not that flexible. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of tricky getting it from the bottom of the diverter around to the back without having it kinked and still going downhill. So this is what I'm settling on. And you know, if this was inside there and the cap was off, it's going to sit directly under and I only need a little piece of hose to get inside my container.